Today, I wanted to talk with you about why people who have suffered from trauma are attracted to new age beliefs and practices. And the background of this is that in the 1980s, I graduated from Chapman University with an MA, a master's and a BA, a bachelor's in counseling psychology. And I actually worked as a psychotherapist for many years, inpatient and outpatient. And my specialty was eating disordered women. And many of them were trauma survivors. Many of them had been abused, abandoned, neglected, and they had turned to eating disorders as a way of coping. And so it's really interesting. Uh, I've now been saved out of the new age for five years as of this recording. In um, it, I was saved in late 2017. And when I look back at my experiences of why I was attracted to the new age and why all those women I met in new age workshops at new age festivals, uh, over 20 years, I was traveling around the world meeting new agers. And as I look back, I can see that same pattern that I saw in my own clinical practice with eating disordered women that uh, we, and I include myself in this, we were attracted to the new age because of our background in trauma. Many of us had secondary PTSD, which is because of some trauma that you witnessed. Many of us had primary PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, symptoms of anxiety, depression, uh, just not feeling safe, having trust issues, having relationship issues, addictions issues. These are all symptoms of someone who's gone through trauma. And the new age seems to offer this panacea, this solution, because the new age uh, hypes and, and markets itself as the cure-all for just name it. If you want to have wealth, if you need more money and abundance, if you need to be healed from something, if you're looking for love, your soulmate, or what they call your twin flame, which is like a soulmate on steroids, anything you're looking for, the new age says, oh yeah, yeah, we'll get that for you. Uh, here, just follow these rules. And so a lot of us got involved and hooked into New Age because of its promises. And look, the New Age makes you feel like a million bucks when you first get in at first. They do what's called love bombing, which means that they make you feel so loved. Uh, people will hug you. Strangers will hug you at the New Age. And, and everyone will tell you that you're perfect, whole, and complete. There's nothing wrong with you. God made you perfect. You're still perfect. People will tell you you're a goddess. They'll tell you you're an angel. And then if that's not enough, they'll pump up your ego by making you feel like you have a special purpose. You were specially chosen to come here at this time to save the world. I mean, talk about grandiose delusions. Jesus is our savior. But in the new age, you're told that your life purpose is to save the world. And you're given all sorts of life purpose readings, cards, and and astrology readings and all sorts of readings from psychics. And they all tell you that you're a healer. And some people will say, oh, you're a healer, you're an energy healer, or you're going to be a psychic, or you're going to be an author. Uh, they all tell you the same thing. And, and they make you feel like you're the only one when everybody's getting the same readings to save the world by doing some new age uh, practice. Uh, and then you might take classes to get that uh, healing center. And they tell you set up altars in your house. Uh, and at those altars, you're always supposed to put crystals, something from nature, like a shell, a feather. Uh, you're supposed to put candles, you're supposed to put statues, but always these polytheistic statues like Buddha, or uh, the Hindu deities, or fairies, or angel statues totally violating the first and second commandments to have no other gods before me and to have no graven images. And so the New Age altars in everyone's homes in the New Age is a place where you're supposed to meditate, not biblically meditate. The Bible says meditate on the scripture. Actually, the word for meditate in the Bible is interesting. It's Hebrew, Hagah, meaning to speak out loud, to utter or mutter the scripture out loud. So very different than New Age meditation, which is all about, uh, it's me-centered. It's all about what am I thinking? What am I feeling? What is the dreams of my heart? What are my wishes? 
And, and the new age meditation is also about um, visualizing your dreams coming true. It involves praying to these different deities and asking them for favors. And that's where people in the new age get into trouble. That's where I got into trouble because these deities actually will do favors for you. I've often said the devil is a sugar daddy. And I mean that because if, if you pray to what you think are deities or you think they're angels, or you think they're spirit guides, you'll get your wishes granted. Um, it'll never be like how you imagine. It'll always have a twist to it. But you'll get hooked on that because it seems like the vision boards, it seems like the positive affirmations, it seems like the psychics and such, it seems like it's working, but it's digging a deeper hole for those in it. And one of the holes it digs is that if you start to, to have a career in the new age, let's say that you do uh, open up a healing practice or you learn how to uh, be a psychic. It's not hard. Um, the demons will help anyone who wants to be a psychic because they want to hook you in. And and so let's just say that you have this new age practice. Then they'll send clients to you. I often marveled at this before I was saved, how people would find me before I was published and known. And I was, um, you know, I called myself a metaphysician back then. And people would say, I don't know how I found you. I just found you. And I started to think there's this unseen marketing team. And it just, yes, there is, it's fallen angels. And they want to enlist people uh, into their army that is antichrist. Uh, those demons will never point anyone to Jesus. They'll never point anyone to study the Bible. In fact, they'll do the opposite. They'll tell lies about Jesus saying he was just a good man that he was a, a, a t good teacher, that he's an ascended master, just absolute lies that are untrue. Jesus is God. He is, you, you can read in this, in, in John 1, Colossians 1, Genesis 1, God, the Father, created through Jesus the Son, us and this world and the stars and the oceans, everything, the light, all came through Jesus. And so we're not told that in the New Age, though. We're told that he's a, just a good role model, a good person. And then even more, we have these imaginations of what we think Jesus was like, that he just sat with the sinners and said, oh, go have a nice life, be positive, be happy. When the truth is that he, he did eat with sinners and, and such in order to reach them. He said that only sick people need doctors like him to tell them to repent and sin no more. So Jesus has had and has commandments that we are commanded to follow. He even said in, in the Gospel of John, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So uh, anyway, in the New Age, we got steeped into what I call endangered servitude. Endangered servitude means that you are uh, in debt to the one who's hiring you. In this case, we were in debt to the devil who was hiring us and making things happen. And then he makes you spend more money than you make. And you're con you're always chasing after more. You, you, there's this hunger that comes in the new age that's never enough. You want more, more, more. And you're told that if you just take one more class, read one more book, take one more workshop, uh, open one more healing center, then you'll get enlightenment. Then you'll be happy and peaceful when you can't. We can't be happy or peaceful without Jesus. So being a Christian in this world, this evil fallen world is not easy, but God gives us peace through Jesus to deal with the storms of life. And so no matter what's going on, you can be assured that Jesus is your Lord and Savior once you're saved and that he is coming back, and that you will be with him for eternity in heaven. So you have that peace. But before you're saved, uh, working as a new age teacher, or healer, or psychic, or whatever you're doing that's new age, you get dependent on the money coming in through the devil, and, and through the ego boosts, where people tell you that you're special, that only you can understand me, you're the best, you know, they put you on a pedestal. And be careful of that, because everyone falls off of pedestals. So don't get hooked into that. Don't get addicted to that. 
So for trauma survivors, there's this dissociation that happens. That's how we survive. Uh, if you have enough abuse come to you, you start to kind of splinter. This is where multiple personalities come about. I actually worked with multiple personalities, both inpatient in the San Francisco Bay Area and inpatient in Tennessee, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And so MPD is something that I'm very familiar with as a former therapist. I'm not a therapist now. I actually don't even believe in psychology. I believe in biblical counseling where it's it's pointing people to God's word and praying with them biblically to help with any sort of uh, mental illness or uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. My point is that when we are trauma survivors, we want to escape reality. This world is very, as we've been saying, is very harsh, very negative. In the new age, you're taught, don't think negative, don't speak negative, don't do anything negative, don't hang around with toxic negative people. Why? The New Age teaches that if you are negative in any way, you will attract bad things to you. You will attract problems or worse into your life. So you're taught again and again to control your mind. Only think about positive thoughts. And so this world with its constant negativity in it is difficult for anyone to live in, but trauma survivors especially. So New Agers are ripe for the dissociation that's offered through the new age. The new age is a dissociative coping mechanism. It tells you you can go into an alternative reality populated with fanciful spirit guides and uh, mermaids and unicorns and fairies and, and power animals. It tells you that you yourself are this special chosen person as we've been discussing. Many of us in the new age, we dressed in costumes literal costumes and we would dress up like angels or fairies or renaissance women or uh, we'd even wear wings or mermaids i wore a mermaid tail underwater with my friends who were also in the new age and and just this dissociation of thinking that you really are these these uh different realm beings uh, if we did, weren't wearing literal co costumes we were often wearing goddess gowns these flowing goddess gowns uh, and many of them were appropriated from different cultures. Many of us uh, wore gowns from India. We fancied ourselves that we knew what Buddhism was when it was just like how we make up our own ideas about Jesus in the New Age. We were making up our own ideas about Buddha just based on his statues. He sure looks peaceful, but without knowing the philosophy at all. So we were making up uh, our own stories about that. And that's part of the dissociation was going into our own, what we'd call a bubble world. And we would have lots of glitter on us. Uh, we, we looked very different. I remember going down the street and people staring at me and I felt really comfortable what I was wearing. But now I know that I was dressed in a new age costume and it was part of the dissociation. Our relationships in the new age were also very superficial because we were told never to acknowledge negativity. In a, in a healthy relationship, you're not always negative, of course, but you're real, you're raw at times. You, it, you tell people what's going on. If you're having an issue, you call your friends, you talk to your friends, you talk to other people, you talk to your family, and you tell them what's going on. If you've messed up, you confess it to others. This is what's raw and real in a, a close, healthy relationship is not overburdening your friends, but at least telling them the truth instead of saying, I'm fine, I'm perfect, whole and complete, like the new age tells you. So our relationships were very superficial, not knowing each other, not knowing the struggles that we were all in, uh, not wanting to admit our own struggles. And so as a result, uh, we would have a lot of problems because we were not dealing with them. I had a lot of relationship problems, a lot of money problems. A lot of people have a lot of health problems because they refuse to admit they've got a health issue and go to a doctor. They want to just uh, will it away with positive thinking, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with being optimistic. Studies do show that it is correlated with longer life expectancy, actually. But if you're being positive to a fault, where you're not reaching out for help, you're not admitting help. I remember I never would balance my checkbook because I didn't want to see if there was any kind of money problem. And sure enough, there was, but I just was trying to not look at it. So 
this is the bubble world, the fantasy world of those who've been traumatized and are in the new age deception. Our focus in the new age was always about manifesting abundance, manifesting our life purpose and getting one more certificate. I had so many certificates, you guys, more than I can remember. Like many of you, I spent thousands of dollars on new age materials, crystals, books, classes, uh, trips to power places, etc. Searching, searching, searching for answers, searching for the truth, while all along that truth was sitting on my bookshelf in the Bible. And I never cracked it open because the devil tells New Agers, particularly those who've been traumatized, and that might include someone who's been traumatized in a church, by the way, by a, a false church. A solid church has no um, tolerance for abuse or gossip or anything like that. But in unbiblical churches where there's abuse, people come out, they don't want anything to do with Christianity. Their faith has been shipwrecked. And they think that these people who hurt them, they get them mixed up with the Lord Jesus, who would never hurt us. In fact, is the opposite, is here to save us. But the devil was very, he was an evil genius in telling us lies. He told us that he didn't exist. He told us there was no such thing as sin or hell that those were fear-based tactics that the Roman Catholic Church was, was perpetuating on people who didn't know any better. Um, but if that was true, the Bible would be filled with Roman Catholic doctrine, and it's not, except for the Catholic Bible, which is different than the canonical Bible. But anyway, uh, we were told that there is no evil in the world, and that people who think there's evil are being fear-based. But I mean, you'd have to be completely living in a cave or be completely blind to not see how much evil there is in this world, that there's evil rulers now, just like there was in biblical times, and they are doing evil things and getting away with it. It's, it just makes you so mad if you think about it. And so the new ager doesn't want to get mad. So she goes into her bubble world with her spirit guides, her power animals and her her altar filled with crystals and statues. And you go there and it makes you feel really good for a while, but reality comes back. So a lot of new agers get into addictions as a result, just trying to numb that pain. You guys, if you are at all watching this and you are dabbling or immersed in new age practices and beliefs, it will get you nowhere. Listen to me, I was in the new age for 59 years, if you count my childhood, and I do, because I was raised in a metaphysical um, belief system that was sharing a false Christ. They thought that Jesus was just a mortal man who was a role model, and that's blasphemy. Jesus is God. It's revealed all through the Bible, which is God's word, by the way. It's not been tampered with. The copies we have of the Bible today very closely with a 98% match the oldest known manuscripts of the Bible. So these lies of the devil, why would he do that? Because he doesn't want people to follow his enemy, Jesus, who he's in competition with, which is insane. You can't compete with God. There's people trying to destroy Christianity. When Jesus said that the church would always survive. And history shows that the more that Jesus' followers are persecuted, the more we grow in numbers and the stronger we get. So the devil's lies about Jesus, about the Bible, about followers of Jesus, they're just that lies. If you're practicing anything new age, such as horoscopes, I know they seem innocent, but it's not. It's condemned in the Bible. Astrology, psychics, numerology, there are numbers in the Bible, but using them as a divination practice is condemned in the Old and New Testament, by the way. Psychics, mediums, condemned in the Old and New Testament. Idolatry, like having statues and praying to them or praying to a painting, condemned. In fact, in the book of Revelation, it says people who are idolaters will not go to heaven. They will be cast into the lake of fire, hell. So if you're doing any of these things, yoga, I know people say it's just stretching. It's not. I did it for 20 years. If it was just stretching, why would a yoga instructor need to go walk through the class and make sure that you have precisely stretched your arms and legs to the exact pose 
which are called asanas. And these asana poses are you using your body to mimic a graven image of Hinduism, like warrior poses, you using your body to be Virabhadras and Virabhadrasana. And that's a Hindu demonic being who is a murderer. The Bible says to glorify God with our bodies, not to mimic Hindu deities with our body in yoga classes and use the blasphemous terms namaste and om. And I know there's so-called holy yoga and Christian yoga classes, but that just doesn't make sense. If you want to stretch, just stretch, but don't do the yoga poses and don't try to plaster over a pagan practice with Bible verses and singing Psalms. It doesn't work like that. Just like you can't take a Ouija board and paste Bible verses all over it and say it's a Christian Ouija board. It's still a pagan demonic practice. Yoga is something that's steeped in Hinduism. I know Hindu people are nice. I know that that sounds racist, but you guys, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father, God, except through me. Jesus is our only mediator between humanity and God. He is our only way to heaven. You don't get to heaven by earning it or being a so-called good person. That's a lie from the devil. I know these near-death experiences seem like they convince us of that, but if it contradicts the Bible, it's a lie. And many of those near-death experiences, especially the ones that are universalists and say everyone goes to heaven, that's a lie. They're trying to trick you. The devil's trying to trick you into following him into his lair because God created hell as a lair for the devil and his fallen angels, also known as the demons. And he wants you to go there. And hell is not a party place with your friends. It's not rock and roll there. It is eternal torment. It is eternal separation. You don't want to go there. If Jesus is calling you, fantastic. Run to him, run into his arms, repent, which means to turn away, to apologize to God sincerely, and ask for God to give you strength. Ask for God to help you to learn to trust him. I had to learn to trust God. I didn't know God when I was in the new age. I thought he was source. I thought he was the universe. I thought he was an energy. How can you trust an energy? That's why I turned to angels back then. But if you pray for God to help you to learn to trust him, he will. And it's mainly through reading his word. Look, I know that reading the Bible isn't something you might consider fun. You might even consider it offensive. And the first couple times I read the Bible, I was really having a difficult time with all of those sacrifices and all the murders and the incest and the rape and everything. But the Bible shows us a picture of what humanity acts like when Jesus is not on the throne of their heart as their king, as their Lord and Savior. It's the same as what's going on in our world right now, largely, with people who have turned away from Jesus, never were with Jesus. If Jesus is not your Lord, if Jesus is not your Savior, then you're operating like a ship on its own, without a captain even, without a rudder, without a sail. You're floating along on the currents of the world, and the world is evil and fallen. There are parts of the world that are beautiful. Don't get me wrong. God created nature and sunsets are beautiful. Animals are beautiful. Flowers and birds. It's all beautiful. But the operations of the world within the governments, until Jesus comes back, God's allowing evil in these places. And some of it's for judgment. Some of it is because of the sin that we've uh, been participating in. So please don't spend another day in the new age. It will not get you anything or anywhere. It'll just get you more pain and more judgment piled on you. And it could cause someone else to stumble who sees you if you're a professing Christian. If they see you dabbling in the occult in the new age, they might think, oh, that's okay. And then they mimic you and get involved in it. Paul did say that the meat that was prayed over in the temples of the idols was okay to eat. But he did say that if he knew that eating that meat would cause a brother to stumble, a brother, in our case, it'd be a brother or a sister to stumble, meaning that they could get confused and get wrapped up in paganism and idolatry to fall away from Jesus. 
Paul said he would never eat that meat then. He would never do anything to cause someone to stumble. And we should be like that. We should be like that, you guys. So let's go ahead and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you for your sovereign nature. We know that you can see everything we think and do and that we will be judged accordingly, according to our actions and our thoughts. And Lord, we know that you are slow to anger, that you're merciful and gracious. And we pray for those watching this video today who do not know your son Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray that you would touch their heart. We pray that you would um, nurture their heart to be teachable. We pray that, that the seed that's planted in this video that your son who came to earth fully God and fully man, who lived a sinless life so that he could be our perfect sacrifice to take the punishment that we deserve for the sins that we've incurred. We pray that you will help people watching this video to know him, to know the real Jesus who died on the cross in our place and who three days later you raised from the dead and Hundreds of people saw him raised from the dead. Hundreds of people walked with him, talked with him, touched him, ate food with him before he ascended to be at your right hand where he is now. And Jesus will come back to judge us all. And unless we are cloaked in the perfect righteousness of Jesus through his shed blood on the cross, unless we have given our lives to Jesus as born again believers that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, unless we are in Christ, we will be judged for all the sins that we've all committed because we're all sinners. So Lord, I pray that you would give strength and encouragement to everyone's watching. Uh, I pray that for those who have become endangered servants of the devil and have a new age job that they're worried about how will I pay the bills if I close that work or walk away from it? What will people think? I pray that you will encourage these folks, Lord. I pray that you will point them in your direction to godly work. I pray that you will help them in our, their relationships, give them the strength to evangelize and to spread the gospel to all nations and make disciples uh, as you commanded us in your great commission. I pray, Lord, for everyone who's watching this video that they will rest in you, that they will have their hope in you, and that they will throw away anything occultic and new age from their house, that they will, even just for a season, stay away from people who are new age and, and new age influences, they stay away from new age places, and that they will have a hunger for your word, that they will read the Bible daily. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help them by illuminating the passages of the Bible that they need to read. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help the people who are watching this to understand your word and to get solid biblical training, to join a solid biblical uh, church where they are welcomed and discipled and shepherded and that no abuse is tolerated at all at that church. They're protected uh, as the shepherd protects his flock. Lord, we thank you so much for hearing our prayers. We know that you hear the prayer of the righteous and that through Jesus, we can approach you directly. We say this prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for joining me for this video. I'm praying for everyone who watches it. And remember, you can write to me on Instagram. I'm sometimes slow to respond because I get a lot of letters, but I do my best to keep up. And if there's a question you have, please write to me on Instagram. I'm happy to talk with you there. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. We just want to sound the alarm as former professional psychics that this is not talking to your loved one. This is not talking to angels of God. This is talking to demons who are really good at predicting the future and can tell you accurate information through the medium who has no idea that she or he is being used by the devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and regardless of how it makes you feel or how the medium looks, because that's another thing too. I mean, they're not wearing demon monster outfits. I mean, they're me and you, they're, they're, they're your girl next door, your guy next door, they're regular people and they don't look scary. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what somebody looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter um, if, if police officers use psychics to 
find missing people. I mean, the spirits are all over. They saw where that person was taken. They don't mind to give you a little something that you want as long as they ultimately get you away from God. Hi, my friends. It's Doreen. I am so pleased to bring to you a good friend of mine, a sister in Christ named Jen Niza. A lot of you already know her or you follow her on social media. She is an ex-psychic who was saved by God's mercy and grace, like me. She was a professional psychic for a decade, and she's here to talk to us about the inside scoop of how do psychics get their information? Why are they so accurate? And can a Christian, a professing Christian, go to psychics or mediums or use cards or any of the other divination tools? So we're going to be talking today to Jen Niza. Her mm-hmm. website is listed below. You're definitely going to want to visit it. It's xpsychicsaved.com. And she just came out with a new book that's her testimony and a lot of good information as a professing Christian and ex-New Ager. And her book is called From Psychic to Saved. Link is below. Jen, thanks so much for joining with me. Hi, Doreen. It's my absolute pleasure to sit with you and speak with you today. And I just want to um, congratulate you again on uh, uh, your seminary experience and, and graduating. I just feel it's such a win for heaven, especially. Oh. Um, yeah. And um, I love what you do here. So thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank, thank you. you. We're mutual fans. You can see all glory, <laughs> all glory to God, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And then, and Jen and I have been trying to book this interview for months, literally for months. Yeah. And, and so by God's grace, we're doing it today. We're so pleased. So Jen, let's just dive right in. Um, You do daily videos and Bible studies on TikTok. So you're reaching a much younger crowd. Um, I assume because I'm not on TikTok, but my perception is that it's the younger folks. Mm -hmm. And So um, what kind of questions are you getting from people at TikTok about Christianity? Well, in regards to Christianity and the new age, I am getting um, questions like, well, why can't you be a Christian and go see a psychic. Um, I actually get a lot of statements. I'm a Christian and a witch. I get a lot of that. They come onto my, oh yes, Doreen, yes. And I get a lot of atheists come on and I look at it as a great opportunity, of course, to share the gospel with people who don't know the Lord. I get questions um, about the accuracy of psychic readings. Mm -hmm. And some people actually gauge whether you should go to a psychic or not based on the accuracy of the reading. Hey, I saw this reader, they were on point. So that's okay, right? And then, oh, I saw one, they were, they didn't hit a single thing. So they were a phony. Um, A lot of questions also surround the notion that being a psychic is a gift from God. I was under that deception myself. And when you are commingling with people that are also deceived, they're going to tell you all kinds of false information. And I really believed that I had a gift as well. So now I get the opportunity to reach these people that think that psychic mediumship is a gift from God. And of course, it is not at all a gift, which then segues into why you cannot really be a practicing Christian and a witch or a psychic, nor should you consult them. As the Lord says in Deuteronomy, he tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 18, um, 10 to 14. I read, I really read from nine to 14. Mm -hmm. I love that, but don't consult psychics, uh, witches, cast spells, conjure up the dead um, to that effect. I'm I'm never verbatim, but I'm very close. And that, that passage really stood out to me when I was first saved. And I was like, wow, God's God's talking about mediums from, from the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people say, well, that's old Testament, old covenant. And we're now, we have Christian freedom under Jesus who fulfilled the law, but that Deuteronomy passage, that is actually Moses explaining the 10 commandments. And that has to do with not violating commandment one and two about having no other gods before me and having no idols and so that's what psychic work and mediumship is, is, is having other gods before you. And, and it's not a gift from God. God does not help people to sin. He, he's right. also, he doesn't contradict himself. If he says something <laughs> right. is a sin, it's still yeah. a sin. 
That's right. That's right. And that's what that's what gets me is that um, or I should say it's heartbreaking because the deception is so is so real. How can one think that God would give you a gift to do something that he says not to do? Right. That doesn't really that yeah. doesn't really make any sense. And it's in the New Testament too, for anyone who's just kind of yeah. fixated on they're they're gonna talk to us about shellfish and mixing linen and cotton. No, oh. that's that's ceremonial law. That's not an operation. That's what Jesus fulfilled. The the moral law or the Ten Commandments still in yes. operation today. We will still be held accountable and we all break them. And that's why we need Jesus. <laughs> Because Jesus Amen. is the only one that didn't break them. Acts 19, 19, Acts 16, wow. um, yes. all talk about that the psychic work is from the devil. We have a choice. We can wait on the Lord. We can turn to him, the real giver of life, the real giver of truth, and that peace of Christ that you cannot attain from any evil spirit, from any psychic medium. Those are temporary comforts. They don't last they give you a little bit of what you want, but the big idea is the lie. And it just pulls you away from the gospel, pulls you away from God to eternally separate one. And it's really sad. So true. Um, yeah. When I was um, practicing psychic like you, um, I, I remember that the accuracy of my readings convinced me that it was real, as well as convinced my audiences and my clients. Um, I did a lot of mediumship and it was just something kind of stumbled into. It just sort of happened. I, I took some classes on it, but it just, I was like you, I thought I had a gift from God. And, and I, and I thought, well, what's wrong with this? It's comforting people who are grieving, you know, that people who wanted to get a message from a loved one and gosh, the messages that would come through were so accurate. Did you have that kind of situation as well, Jen? 100%, 100%. And I have to agree, it convinced me because I was, how could I possibly have known yeah. those things? Where was I seeing these things? Where was I hearing these things from? And why were they so accurate? I didn't know the person from a hole in the wall, as I would say, yeah. <laughs> never met the person. <laughs> I never met the person and there they were. And when I look back, um, you realize that it's not a mental illness because a mental illness doesn't operate in that way. Yeah. You don't sit there and, you know, meditate and open yourself up and then tell this stranger, absolute stranger, so many things about their life and things about their deceased loved ones, things about what they, I always tell people I may, I, I can joke a little bit because I'm saved, praise God. But I, I used to sit there and the evil spirits would tell me, not only about their family members, not only some predictions, because though they don't know everything, of course, they've been studying us and can predict. And I always say kind of like my husband, I know my husband, I've been watching him for years, mm -hmm. I can tell what he's going to do. Um, that was a little sidebar, but yeah. And yeah, sorry about that. But no, anyway, I, I, I get it. Um, the, it's yeah, coming from demons. I thought it was yeah. from angels you know in mm -hmm. second corinthians eleven fourteen, the yes. dev devil masquerades as an angel of light and and then sec second corinthian eleven fifteen is also yeah. very interesting that the people who are servants of the devil um also masquerade as agents of light and yes. that's what i was doing unknowingly you know the devil didn't announce himself and say hey you know i'm gonna fool people with these angels it's it's very um it's, in, it's an evil genius plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And we gave that permission along the way. We gave that permission to them along the way. And like you said, it's not like we just, you know, uh, like a movie, like you're signing your name in blood and saying, okay, devil, no, but he seduces you with it. It's, yeah. it's enticing. It's interesting. He plays on our vulnerabilities, our insecurities. And there you are ripe for the picking, to be honest. And mm -hmm. that's where you give that permission. Once you start, like for me, I started having dreams that would come true around the age of 12. And then we had a tarot card reader in the home and I love my parents very much. So this isn't, you know, to, to, come, to come at them, but there it was. And it was, it was intriguing. It was attractive. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. And then you have this power. And I don't know what you think about that, Doreen, but I see that's where the devil uses that pride, that, that sin of pride oh, yeah. to come in. 
And it's not even that you're walking around boasting about yourself, but he's given you something now, a little something for now, Mm -hmm. that power to uh, that ability um, to know things that you shouldn't be knowing. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I was definitely narcissistic and prideful back then. I wouldn't brag about it openly, but I was encouraged to keep going. Um, my, a lot of my psychic work was in front of audiences, you know, in yeah. workshops. And then on the radio, um, I was doing radio psychic reading for years where people would phone in and, and just from their voice, I could see things. I'd get visions and, right. and they were just so detailed and accurate. I'd get names sometimes in foreign right. languages and, and just all kinds of things I could not have known. Um, And so a lot of times people will ask me, and I'm sure you get asked this too, Jen, is this, was it sleight of hand or were you just Mm -hmm. looking at their body language? And, Mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't see half the people I was reading because they were either on the phone through the radio, Mm -hmm. or I was in a huge auditorium with, that wasn't light enough to see the actual person in the Mm -hmm. audience I was doing a reading for. So it wasn't body language. It wasn't sleight of hand. I'm sure there's psychics that do that, that are fake, Right. but it sounds like you and I, we had that genuine, horrible, but at the time we thought it was wonderful experience of the devil using us to hook people in. One million percent. Mm -hmm. And coming from that place of compassion. um, I don't know about you, but I know that an I always wanted to help people. I yeah. always wanted to, I felt sad when somebody was mourning. I felt sad for the people that lost their children, for the people that just lost their mom or dad. I felt really sad for them and I wanted to help any way that I could. And I would cry with these people and hug these people. And it that's so deceiving. That's mm-hmm. so deceiving. And like you said, the devil masquerades as an angel of light. And it seems wonderful. It seems like their mom, it seems like their dad. And that's what sucks people in Mm -hmm. because it feels good. It feels good. And we don't really want to lose people. Grief is a terrible emotion and we want to constantly have contact. We don't want to let go because we don't have a real understanding. I believe Mm -hmm. now, of course, I mean, hindsight is 2020 and Jesus, when I met Jesus, I mean, he just opened my eyes. It was just his light. I love John a 12 says that I am the light of the world and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness again. Mm -hmm. And that's that light. And I think about Paul Mm -hmm. when he was converted, right? That light. And you keep thinking about the light of Christ revealing, because a lot of people actually ask me, well, how did you find out that this was evil spirits? How did you find out this was demonic? Jesus lights the truth up. He reveals everything Mm -hmm. that's hiding in the darkness, the darkness of our hearts and the darkness of our life. And we need him to do that. We need Mm -hmm. him to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Praise Jesus for saving us. And I mean, it was definitely not something that we did or earned or deserved. It was purely by God's grace and mercy. And I pray that uh, God uses us yes glorify himself and to point people out of the new age and warn people who think this is okay because it's as we're discussing because it seems to be accurate um some people identify as christian witches could you talk about why that's impossible to be a christian witch please yes absolutely so a christian first of all is one who adheres to the teaching of jesus christ also who understands that as John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word is God. The Bible is the living word of God. The Bible is Jesus speaking to us. It is Jesus and it is a verb. So in the Bible, God is very clear about what divination is, not to consult it, consult people that practice it, not to practice it yourself. And again, we go from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. So one cannot be a Christian and do something that is completely, it's not even, you know, Doreen, as a saved person, like you said, we still sin, we bring it to the Lord, but this is directly speaking to evil spirits. And as I always say, God isn't an angry grandpa. He's not a buzzkill. He does this for our protection. He says, do not do it. So you cannot be a Christian and reject God's word and reject his commands. It does, it, you, are, you are not walking with the Lord if you do that. I don't mean to sound yeah, mean no. or judgmental, but that's the truth. That is the truth. 
Yeah, you, you're not sounding mean or judgmental. I mean, okay. I thought I was a Christian in the new age. I don't know about you, but I used to call myself a Christian, a, an open-minded yeah. Christian. I thought that I was better mm-hmm. than these narrow-minded, judgmental, <laughs> fear-based <laughs> who, who were saying, don't do that. So I, I was yes. in that delusion of thinking I could blend new age and Christianity when they're the opposite. They yes. can never blend like oil and water. That's so, right. That's right. You can, it's a choice. Either you're going to follow the world and, and the evil system of the world, including um, divination, or you're going to wait on the Lord and go to him for his peace and follow him, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. So Jen, when someone came to you for a mediumship session, and like you said, the tragedy of losing your child, you become desperate to know that they're okay in heaven. So you go to see a medium. Um, And so you would give them very accurate information about their child and reassure them. And then there'd be tears and they'd be comforted. So people are going to say, well, what's wrong with that? Oh yeah. My own, I had family members. Absolutely. That would even say, well, what's, what's the big deal? You're helping people. Isn't it good? Isn't it good? But that just goes back to the deception of what it is. And, and, Honestly, uh, Doreen, if you think about it, it actually um, keeps people wallowing in their grief because they're going to have to keep coming back to the medium. So they're not really feeling good. They're feeling good for a couple of minutes, but they're being lied to. But I remember now thinking back on these false ideas of Jesus, these false ideas of, of heaven. I mean, the other side was kind of like this place out there that we really molded because it wasn't the true heaven and it wasn't truth. So it was a lie. I mean, you know, the other side, so-and-so is coming through from the other side and here they are. And then what, what did we think would get somebody into heaven or not heaven? Was there a hell? I mean, it was really just so subjective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It was our, our own theology that we, I don't know, got from the, yeah. From other people. Yeah. From, (laughs) For me, it was a lot of listening to people who had near-death experiences, oh. and, and they all contradicted each other, so I don't even know how I had a cohesive belief about heaven back then, but I definitely mm-hmm. was a universalist. I thought, everybody's getting into heaven. There mm-hmm. is no such thing as hell, and that's the devil's big, big agenda right there is to get people to hell with him um, because he's in competition with God, and especially with Jesus, and, and so the devil wants to lie to people and say he doesn't exist and that there's no such thing as hell, that hell is a metaphor for life on earth being hellish. And yes. that's what I believed. And that's what I taught for many years. And it's, it's dead wrong. And I was heading to hell. I'm sure you were too. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, um, and so that's now, why I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, we're not here judging anybody. I, I, I promise you, we're not here out of a spirit of judgment. We're here because we wish someone would have warned us. I mean, it's all God's timing, mm-hmm. but we just want to sound the alarm as former professional psychics that this is not talking to your loved one. This is not talking to angels of God. This is talking to demons who are really good at predicting the future and can tell you accurate information through the medium who has no idea that she or he is being used by the devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and regardless of how it makes you feel or how the medium looks, because that's another thing too. I mean, they're not wearing demon monster outfits. I mean, they're me and you, they're, they're, they're your girl next door, your guy next door, they're regular people and they don't look scary. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what somebody looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter um, if if police officers use psychics to find missing people. I mean, the spirits are all over. They saw where that person was taken. They don't mind to give you a little something that you want as long as they ultimately get you away from God. So um, just to go back, because you said, well, you know, in regards to it feeling good, so what's wrong with it? Or you're helping people, so what's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it is that it's completely against God. And that comes down to, um, you know, who you choose, God or not God. And not God is the devil. 
mm-hmm. and the evil system of this world. And it is very sad. And I, I agree. It's never an attack on somebody. As a matter of fact, I have so many people coming on my lives that are in witchcraft, that are practicing. And some of them aren't mean to me. <laughs> some of them, because, you know, of course, when you shine the light on sin, one will feel defensive and persecuted and um, they can get a little mean, but some people come on and they're nice and they're like, Hey, you know, um, and I'll say, Hey, listen, I love you, but I have to tell you the truth because I love you. Yes. Because I love you. I could not even imagine somebody um, being eternally separated from God. It's very sad to me. That's very Mm -hmm. sad to me. So we tell, we speak the truth to them. And actually Doreen, I want to say that you never know who Jesus is calling. Like you never know who he's calling today. He says, my sheep hear my voice. They recognize my voice. That could be today for somebody watching this video. And God will use this video just to give them, he's already quickened their heart. He's already softened their heart. And there it is. I've seen that happen before too. It's amazing. Yeah. Praise God. I I love getting those letters from people. And they they usually say, when you first converted, I thought you were a nutcase. And I used to put you (laughs) down on social media and cuss you out. And And I'm sorry, because now Jesus has called me out. And I understand. (laughs) I I must get those letters maybe once a day now. Yeah. Where in the beginning, it was 90% people cussing me out. And, and so it's, it's, it's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. um, And his timing, because we don't know when he's coming back. We all all that we know is he is coming back. And he told us to be prepared. And so being prepared means repenting, which means changing our mind about sins. The Bible gives us clear indication of what a sin is. And, and it's the moral law is on our hearts. So we know, um, everyone knows that God is real. Everyone knows God exists and it's in our hearts. And so when we turn away from that the best we can and pray for God to give us strength and then surrender our lives to Jesus as our Lord and Savior, um, he welcomes us. And he welcomes us with open arms. You know, I, I remember thinking when I was first leaving the new age that not only would people be mad at me, but God would be mad at me. And, and just this oh, wow. fear, what would, what would God think? What would people think? And having to face that. And then ultimately having to make the choice that it mattered. All that mattered really is what God thinks. And yes. pe- people's opinions are, they fluctuate. And I can't please everyone. And That's right including my own family. Did, did anyone in your family get upset that you converted? No, actually, they didn't get upset. Actually, they ended up um, abandoning the psychic world. Oh. Um, I've seen amazing um, transformations in my own family as a result of my salvation. I kind of call it the trickle down effect. Yes. You can kind of see, see what happens um, and how God uses and he even used suffering. He uses suffering. He's right there in our pain. And he's, he's used um, these hard times that I, I did go through many trials and uh, he used them. And my daughter ended up being saved, getting saved when she oh, was about, God. yeah, before 15 and Doreen. Now she's sharing on Instagram. She's Aww. sharing the deception of the new age. And then her friends are talking to her about it. And now they're engaging her in these social circles that she gets into because God just keeps using. Aww. It's it's just beautiful to me. And it takes time. It's yeah. It's on his timing. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, actually, um, your miracle transformation, I love all testimonies because of course they're transformations, but another indication of God's, um, of who God is and evidence of God are these miracle transformations. So I have to tell you, Doreen, when I talk to my friends, you know, uh, before doing this, this co- having this conversation with you, <laughs> I said, I had your cards and I oh, used wow. to use them. I read, I read from the angel cards. I had the oh, angel wow. cards mm-hmm. and um, I don't bring that up to. Yeah, no, it's I, I fine. That I, doesn't upset you. I, I, it's, it's my old life and I yeah. am trying to get them off the market. Um, uh, what's going on is that there's bootleg printers now printing them. Yeah. My, my yeah. ex publisher wrote me yesterday out of the blue yeah. and they said, you know, we're, we're trying to get everything off the market because we know you don't want it on there anymore. And I'm like, thank you for hearing me. And then they said, but there's these bootleg printers oh. in China and India that keep printing and they're violating copyright. It's, 
it's totally illegal what they're doing and they pop wow. up on Amazon and eBay and they they sell really bad products too. I mean, it's bad to, <laughs> enough that it's the divination, right. but they, they don't come with guidebooks. But then the good news is people then write me on Instagram saying, hey, I didn't get my guidebook with this card deck I bought. And so I get a chance to connect with them and wow. tell them why I absolutely do not recommend cards anymore. But that's right. really interesting that you used my cards. Wow. I did. And, and I only bring it up because that's the transformation. That's the miracle transformation um, that I see in your story, because here you are with a huge platform in the new age. And now you just graduated seminary. And this just, see, to me, it's still just mind blowing how yeah. big our God is and what he can do and how he's using you now for so many people. And actually, when I came across your, I think it was your um, testimony, mm -hmm. I was already about three years into my walk. And mm -hmm. I think I was just thumbing around on YouTube, looking for other people that were free from the new age. And there you were. And I saw your name and I said, no, that can't be that can, Doreen virtue. That cannot be because you were kind of like our, you know, Barbara Streisand to the <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I hope it's okay to say that. Yeah, of course. No, I, I was pretty well known in the new age. And, but that's and what just, makes it more powerful, yeah. Doreen. Well, yeah. you know, what? it's part of God's plan. And I'm just so grateful to him because <laughs> I, I didn't know. I thought I was helping people just like mm -hmm. you did, Jen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I had no intention of misleading people, but I was misled. And then unfortunately, yeah. I led that, you know, passed it along. So. Yeah. yeah. You and I understand each other because yes, we do. Did you have any of your former clients um, come to Jesus through your testimony or? I had like that? one that definitely um, took the time to sit with me. She actually ended up ordering my book and Yay. a Bible and a Bible. This was years later, actually, just recently. I'm going to check in with her soon and see how she's doing. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Some. And then there was another lady who said that she was going to, I was coming out of my baptism. I got baptized within, you know, probably the first few months of being saved somewhere in there. That was such an exciting day and yeah. I was baptized. And as I'm leaving the church, I got a text from a client, an ex client who said, I'm going to give this up and I'm done with the psychics. And I thought that was just a beautiful way to end that night. And I, yeah, so, but I don't know. Yes, praise praise God. God. No, that's that's amazing. I love that, Jen. And, and I love your book, too. I, again, the oh. link is below. And I mm -hmm. highly encourage you to check out Jen's book from mm -hmm. Psychic to Saved. And I really enjoyed it. And your writing style is is really engaging, too. Thank as, you. as are your videos. I always <laughs> love seeing you. I don't, I don't go on TikTok because I don't yeah, understand okay. it. Um, but I, you put your videos on Instagram and I follow you on Instagram and they're always right on point. You know, they're always talking about things that, um, I get letters about. So i I share your videos a lot in my Aww. Instagram stories because mm -hmm. it's just, you know, all the things about chakras and angels yes. and numerology and all the things that we were deceived in when we yes. were in the new age. And, and I love how you expose the underbelly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> get to the heart of the matter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the crystals come up a lot. Actually, a lot of people ask me about the crystals. Um, if you think about it, actually, look out, I'll be doing a video soon. Um, there is a place not far from me where I live that I mean, just right out in the open, just hey, here's some crystals, here's some, you know, metaphysical things. And it's a shop and they just have it. It's, it's, I mean, you're seeing them pop up and people think this will um, draw something towards me. I mean, I used to have the rose quartz. I thought it was going to bring love into my life. I mean, when you really, yeah, the deception is so real. And, and so we go out there and say, no, this is God's creation. We don't worship it. And, and it can't do anything for you. Stop giving it power that it doesn't right. have. That's why when I look at it and I was just doing the videos about the tarot too, Doreen, we, we used tarot, my sister and I, since I was a teenager, but when you really look into its origin, it started out really just as a card game. Mm -hmm. And then you bring in an occultist and a fortune teller. And now they, they attach these interpretations back to, um, you know, Egyptian meanings and esoteric 
um, you know, meanings and things like that. And that's where that whole thing came into effect. And I just find that like, wow, like you can pick up any object, but you're communicating with the evil spirit. You're not, that object is doing nothing for you, you know? So there's no power there and people and the youth with the man of the youth, my, my daughter is 20. So she tells me a lot that her age group is a lot into the manifesting mm. vision boards mm. and trying to have the universe assist them in attaining things, desires and wishes and things like that. But I mean, I did it too. When I was in the new age, it's just mm. now it's mind blowing. God says, I am the Lord, your God, do not consult and do not worship and do not gaze at the stars and do not. He created all of these yeah. things. Yeah. That was my little rant. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> I, I, I so relate to everything that you're saying. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's just, you know, one of the things, because you brought up metaphysical shops, new age shops, yeah. is, which I used to just, I, I'm going to use the word haunt. I was, I was, <laughs> I was in those shops, either working, you know, giving speeches or signing my books that they'd carry and, or just going there because I liked what I thought was positive energy that I'd go yeah. into crystal shops, you know, I'd go to Sedona, Arizona all the time, <sighs> with the big crystal shops and yeah. the ley lines and, and, and I, and what was interesting was as soon as I was saved, that same, I guess, energy of those shops was repelling to me and it started to give me headaches and I do not get headaches. I'm, I mean, I have my stress in different ways, not headaches at all. And I don't even ever need an aspirin because I just don't get headaches. So I started to get headaches. I, I started calling them demon headaches. Because what I originally perceived as, you know, the positive energy of the angels, as soon as I was saved, it was this horrible presence. Wow. And, and I can, I kind of can tell when someone's got demons around them now, you know, Ooh, that discernment, that discernment. Yeah. Yes. Um, because I get a headache and it's, it's wow. almost like when someone's uh, corns throb because the thunderstorms are coming, you know, my, my yes. body just can sense the demons. And, and so um, I call on Jesus for the person. I don't try to cast out demons on my own. I, in the beginning I did, but you know, that's, that's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> in the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, in the beginning, I used to think I could cast out demons and I was into deliverance ministries and all that. Oh but, no. It makes it worse. Yes. Yes. I'm not really that into the deliverance ministry no. situation. I hope that, oh, I always pray for just even one, that God would reach one soul, just one soul today, or whenever you air this through this video. Um, yeah. And and like you said, you were so on point. I, I would have loved, nobody ever told me, nobody ever told me when I was in the new age, when I was having visions, when I was, you know, doing readings, nobody told me. And I'm not saying I would have had the ears to hear. The Lord knows me and knows my heart, but wow, I would have loved to have heard it even once. Yeah. So I pray that yeah. that, yeah. So that reaches people. Yeah. Well, I did hear it and I didn't believe it. And wow. so when I was first saved, I told people, why did I never hear the gospel? And then I realized later, oh, I had heard the gospel many times, but I, my heart was hard and I had the veil over me. The Holy yeah. Spirit has to lift the veil. And so at God's timing, I would what age 58 <laughs> so <laughs> you're a senior citizen getting saved um no stop that. <laughs> no I'm serious I was a senior citizen getting saved and yeah. and so um he he had that perfect timing which I trust and now I'm 63 so um I I pray that my testimony and your testimony can help people reach people at a younger age yes uh, like your daughter <laughs> Yes. And so um, my biggest regret of getting saved late in life is that I raised my sons in the new age. And by the time I was saved, they were already adults, you know, with okay. my influence and, and they got really, really angry that I was oh, wow. putting down the new age. And again, it's, it goes to motive. Why am I putting down the new age? Because it leads to hell, That's which right. brings me to my next question, Jen, mm -hmm. if you could, Talk to professing Christians. I'm talking about um, particularly women who go to church. They believe in Jesus. They might, maybe they're saved, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, and yet they go to psychics, they use cards, they consult with astrology and horoscopes. What would you say to them, Jen? I would, I would say to them, um, firstly, to bring that to the Lord, always bring something that you're doing to the Lord and check in with him, get a little inspection from Jesus Christ on it, go into the word of God, because that's how we arm ourselves selves up against the spiritual warfare against these false notions against these false teachers second corinthians 10 um five right we we said uh, we demolish all arguments and pretensions that set themselves up against the word of god but we need to know the word of god to be able to fight against this so what's going on if you're saved if you're going to church i inc- would encourage that person be in the word of god be in prayer The enemy wants to use any vulnerability you have, any insecurity you have to pull you away and to have you deeper and deeper and deeper going into sin. And that's chronic sin. It's a rejection of the Lord's word. It's a rejection of um, God himself to continue going to psychics and mediums. And um, as Doreen said, I don't know who I'm talking. Look, I'm talking to myself and the thing. But as you said, Doreen, as you said, it only leads one away from God. And, you know, um, we all sin. We all sin and we live with a sin nature. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But chronic sin. We definitely need to bring that to God and, and see where we're at with him. Yeah. And don't turn to I always say, you know, if you could see the demons behind the psychic medium, imagine if you could see them with your your naked eye, would you? you still want to get that information from them? They're masking, they're pretending, they're masquerading. It's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not an angel, it's not a spirit guide, it's not an ascended master. It is an evil spirit conveying those messages when you can have truth, peace, and rest, and joy in Jesus Christ, and eternal life in him, in him. He says, I come to give life. When you go towards entertaining the evil spirits, they only can bring death. That's it. And that's oppression too, Doreen. I mean, if you're a Christian and you're still seeing psychics, you're, you've got that door open and you're bringing that into your family. You're bringing that into your home. And that's oppression. That's oppression. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. And the devil loves to mix in truth, a little bit of truth with lies to hook us in. And if you want to know more about that, read the chapter of Genesis Mm three, the serpent in the garden, and you'll see how he says a little bit of truth, but mostly he's, he's saying you can have secret wisdom. You can be like God, you can skirt around God's law and commandments. And so Jen, when someone is listening to this and they've gone to a medium in good faith, because they were grieving and they got a message, you know, maybe tragically from their own child mm-hmm. or their spouse who passed over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they hear you say that, no, no, you weren't talking to your son. You weren't talking to your husband. You were talking to a demon. I mean, that's got to upset people. How do you counsel them through that realization? It does. Um, it does upset them uh, a great deal. And that then they try to say, well, um, you can't tell me. And, and that's just they're They're just holding on. They're just holding on to that lie because it's bringing them some sort of false comfort. And I don't push Doreen. I only speak truth. I go right back into the Bible and I say, well, here's, you know, the second Corinthians um, 11, 14 to 15. I'm so sorry. And I understand. And my heart goes out to you because it does. Um, But that's not, that's not who it is. God speaks to us through the Holy spirit. And that's the only spirit that we're talking to. And if it's not coming from the Holy spirit, it's coming from evil spirits. And we, and as you said, this goes back to even Exodus, we have, of course, the the serpent was lying in the garden. So it's not new, but then in Exodus with the sorcerers Mm -hmm. coming in with their power, but they had no restorative power, or they couldn't really uh, do anything. Um, Of course, they'll never amount to God's power or be God, but that's what they want. Um, That was a little sidebar again. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, the devil tries to counterfeit God. 
Yes. He tries, he tries to copy God, but he's using it in a way to get people away from God because he's in competition with God, which is insane. Because yes. God is yeah. God. <laughs> right. Right. Right, and right. We already know the end of who wins. So yes, that's right. <laughs> Jesus already that's, won. Yes, amen. That's our victory in Christ. Yes, definitely. Listen, I lost very, very, very important people to me before I was saved and after I was saved. And I was that person when I was in the new age, I was doing automatic writings for myself. I was reading my my uh, the other mediums. We were reading each other. I was that person. I would say I was you. I was seeking. I was looking for comfort. Um, when I found out that they were evil spirits and that's where it's coming from, I take that truth and I still take my rest in and peace in Jesus. I've lost people very important to me after I was saved. And it's like, I just feel free. I feel in peace. I'm not always looking. I'm not always searching. Um, to, to know things. I'm not searching to know things. I'm not searching for my, my nanny and pop up. I take rest in Christ and that's, that's freedom. Yeah. Free. Amen. Hope that answers that question. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I, I love your passion. I just, your passion's so palpable. I just love how Thank you, you are speaking to, it's like you're speaking to your old self in a way. Yeah. You know? Yes, yes. You know, I, I speak to many, many people around the world on TikTok Live. And I'll tell you, Doreen, the attacks come, the people come. I actually have moderators. You have to see what, what we deal with. And we keep going Monday to Friday. And we are on there. And I, I go through my testimony many times throughout the week because there are some people that are earnestly um you know, interested in seeking. And I end up crying many times because the gravity of my salvation, because for me, I actually almost physically lost my life. That's, you know, I suffered an, a trauma. And had I gone that day, I would not be with Jesus in heaven. I would not have been. I would have died in my sin as a psychic medium. So that's why the gravity of my salvation is so it's it's captivating my own heart it's it's amazing to me and um how how god saved me and he gave me that opportunity and he gave me that chance and as you said earlier i don't know when my day is i don't know when my eyes are going to close i don't know when jesus is coming back only the father knows the hour but he says right there in matthew yes to be prepared to be prepared to so each day each day and it's glorious to bask in our salvation yes. of the Lord. Yeah. It, it's yeah. glorious. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful day. Each day mm -hmm. is a wonderful day. We have trials, of course, it's not a piece of cake, but in the midst of those trials, I walk around with a smile on my face because mm -hmm. I have that peace inside. I don't have that angst anymore. What's going to happen? What am I going to do? I need to do a writing. I need to get a reading. I don't have that anymore. That's right. Yeah. In the new age, we had a very long list of to do <laughs> things every day that we yes. had to do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it was all about Mercury retrograde and the new oh. moon and the full moon and, and just so much that you had to do. And so as Christians, it's so, it's so simple, you know, read your Bible, pray, glorify God, love people, love God, repeat. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> it's That's so absolutely easy. true. And again, as you um, said earlier, I want to reiterate that neither Jen nor I are saying we're perfect, sinless people. No. We know that we're sinners. We know more than ever that we're sinners and we still sin. We make mistakes. It's yes. how we handle it now. That's different. We bring it to God. We sincerely repent. I don't know about you, but I'm on my knees, you know, saying, I'm sorry, God. And, and then pray for strength so that you won't repeat it. Pray for God to reveal to you anything that's in you that's offending him and, yes. um, and pray that you won't sin against him. And so each day it's more about that sanctification process yes. and be becoming more sanctified every single day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's, that's what all Christians go through. It's yes. not, you're just instantly, you know, this holier than thou person. No, that's right. not salvation at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually humbling. 
to very the humble. Head. <laughs> yes, he refines us. He mm-hmm. refines us. He sure does. And that's all the way until we close our eyes on this side of heaven. He'll be refining us and working on us and molding us, changing us. Did I say growing us and growing us? Yes, yes. And it's an amazing, it's an amazing process. Well, Jesus died for our sins while we were still dead in sins. He gave his life um, suffering terribly on the cross. And then after he died, um, God raised him from the dead three days later, as was prophesied all over the Old Testament. And then he, he, he was resurrected and hundreds, thousands of people saw him. People ate with him. He wasn't just some spirit. They sat down and had food with him. They touched him. And then he ascended. And he's now at the right hand of the father and he will return to judge all of us, including Christians. The thing is that when he's judging Christians, we are, we we have Jesus's righteousness imputed to us because Mm -hmm. we're followers of Jesus and we're in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so nobody's sinless except for Jesus. And as a Christian, God sees that sinlessness during the judgment. And so it is so important if you're watching this video and you're being called by Jesus, don't delay it. Don't think, well, I just want a little more fun. The fun you think you're having in the new age is not fun. As Jen said, she now has peace. Finally, things could be stormy in her life, but she's got this smile on her face and this peace that only (laughs) comes from Christ. So please, you know, go get on your knees, repent, apologize to God and pray for help. And then just declare with all sincerity, with all your heart that you've given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. Amen. Amen. I love that. And I certainly hope uh, some of my daughter's friends hear that particular message story. Yeah. <laughs> they want to have a little bit more fun. Go to, go to Jesus today first. Let him do a work on your heart. And a lot of people ask me, well, does God love me? I'm this or I'm that. He makes it perfectly clear in John 3, 16, that he so loved the world. He gave his only son that whomever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And when you come to Christ, that's when he does a work on you. He does a work on your life. And it's not between me and you or Doreen and you. It's between you and Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. (laughs) Yes, we have. (laughs) So if if people have questions, can they contact you? 100%. I always make myself available. My website links to my email, my Instagram, and my TikTok. And I always get back to people. And I have a little prayer submission form on there as well on my, and so if you need prayer or anybody to walk alongside you, and I do personally make phone calls and I will pray with people and, um, and help them and walk alongside them. Yes, they can, they can contact me. I always give the long answer. (laughs) I love that. No, thank you for being accessible because I know it's not only it takes time, but it's, it's so emotional to work with people, especially if they're really upset when they first come to you. And, and I, uh, I work with people as much as I can on Instagram direct messages. Um, And it's, uh, it's, it's really important that people get support when they leave the new age. There's quite a few Facebook groups um, from new age to Jesus type of groups that you can go to. I think that when you come out of the new age and you're in, like I'm, I'm in a real conservative traditional Baptist church with my husband, of course. And, and so there's, there's people there that I can relate to who've come out of the, the hyper charismatic tradition, Mm -hmm. but I'm, my husband and I are the only ones who come out of new age and you can kind of feel like you've got a letter a on your chest sometime, you know, Mm -hmm. like how could you be so stupid to follow the new age? (laughs) So you got to get support from other ex new agers. You really need to have fellowship with people who've come to Christ after coming out of that madness. (laughs) Only, only an ex new ager understands the delusion that we were under. Right. Yes, yes, yes. That happened to me too. When I, when I went into my church, I praise God that he put an amazing pastor on my path, pastor Jonathan Badgett, who has since um, gone down to a senior pastor position in Georgia. He was here in New York um, and he knew about divination and he wasn't afraid to talk about it. And this is the pastor that God put on my path, but the people in the church were very, um, they were even, you know, standoffish towards mm-hmm. me. They yeah. were standoffish. Yeah. Well, so I, mean, I agree. It makes sense because the devil tries to get into the church and he, yeah. he often uses 
um, people who call themselves witches or, you know, new agers to go into churches to infiltrate. So yes. it's good to be really discerning about who comes in your church and, and, and yet um, be like Barnabas who came alongside mm -hmm. Saul, Paul, you know, Barnabas came alongside him and said, you know, yes, he's killed Christians, but I've just have this calling to help him. And so what you're doing, Jen, is, is you're being Barnabas to people who are Aww. coming out of working for the devil and the devil was their father as he was for us which we didn't know. And yes. now, now God's their father. And they, they're as a saved person, you're a child of God before then you're a creation of God, but through Jesus, we become adopted as children into the family. So yes. we need big brothers and sisters who've, Amen. who've been in there for a while to walk alongside us. So thank you for doing that. Amen. Oh, all glory to God, Doreen, all glory right. to God. My That's pleasure right. to obey and serve <laughs> right. him any is, way I can. Yes. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell people watching this video? Um, I think I would just uh, encourage anybody watching this video today. Um, there's nothing that you've done in your life that you can't bring to God. Jesus meets you where you are. Jesus saved me whilst I was a sinner. He died for me whilst I was a sinner. I was a psychic medium when he saved me. He didn't wait for me to get my act together. He didn't wait for me to clean up my life, which I couldn't do on my own anyway. So don't ever feel like you can't come to God, that he won't forgive you. He will. You bring it to him. Bring it to him today. Eternal life is a long time, and he loves you so much. He loves you so much. He gave you a choice. We're not his robots. We're not his puppets. He gave us free will. He gave us a choice. He wants an intimate relationship with us. He wants us to come to him freely and he will, he will forgive and accept you in when you accept his free gift of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us. Amen. Those are my words. Thank you. Thank you. That's really powerful. Very heartfelt.